Amen. Amen. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And where and who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You who are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We are living in interesting times. On March 1st, we observed the first Sunday of Lent. And we were looking toward five Sundays of worship in the, in the church building, followed by Holy Week beginning on April 5th. Today we are worshiping under some different circumstances. And I do not have to repeat the events of the last few weeks to remind you of what we have gone through. We all know them too well. But these events have transformed our everyday lives in ways we could not have imagined a few weeks ago. They have led some of us to ask questions as we try to understand what is happening. Our kids are asking questions. Others are asking questions. I ran into someone the other day who I had not seen for a while. And in fact, I had not, he had, his features had changed so much that I didn't quite recognize him when I saw him. Fortunately, I was on my good behavior um, because I, 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 when the person called my name, I had, to, I had to try to figure out who this was and then we, I, I re we reconnected and I realized who it was. But he said he had been struggling with his faith and, that his, Christians and his Christian belief. And then he adds, and now this, referring to a present situation. Now, some of you are wondering where God is in all of this. Just like this individual, you may have been struggling with your faith and struggling with things in your own lives. And now this. And so, very often we wonder, does God care? And where is God? Is God concerned about us? The Gospel reading this morning from the book of John addresses that question immediately. Jesus cares. So Jesus is walking. He's walking and in those days walking was a way in which people went around. They, walk, they, they didn't have the means of transportation like we do. So they walked and Jesus was walking. And he comes up on a man born blind from birth. And that evokes a question from his disciples. They say, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents? that he was born blind. Ancient traditional Jewish speculation was that there was a connection between sin and illness. Many people believe that a parent's sins were visited on the children and caused suffering. So it was not abnormal to ask a question like this. And some of us are asking that question today. In fact, I haven't heard it. But I can just imagine that some people are thinking that they, whatever we're going through is some, some punishment from God. It always happens when there's a tragedy. There are always some people who think that there's a punishment from God. Or sometimes when something happens to us that we can't explain. And very often people try in trying to understand that and trying to see that there's a cause and effect. But Jesus just shuts that down immediately. Jesus says, this man, neither him nor his parents were um, sinned. And so, but Jesus goes a step further and shows his care and his concern. Jesus heals the man. Jesus touches him and then Jesus makes um, this paste of dirt and then tell, puts it on his eyes and tells him to go and wash in the pool. This man never asked to be healed. In fact, I think he didn't, he didn't 
I know what it was to see. He had become used to his condition. Like very often we become used to our situations and our circumstances. We don't know any differently. We don't know any better. And so he was quite resigned to this situation. But this shows us God's care and God's concern. Jesus just searches this man out and, and Jesus, without him asking to be healed, Jesus heals him. Now there are situations in the Bible where people ask to be healed, Lord, heal me. They heard about Jesus and they, they wanted Jesus to do something for them. But this man did not ask. God cares about us and God sees us in our own situations and circumstances. Sometimes we don't even know to ask. Or sometimes we don't even think that God is going to hear us. But God, God through Jesus, made an, a, a move toward this man. Now, there's something about how God cares and God con is concerned about us as exemplified in the life of Jesus. Jesus knew that this act was going to get him into trouble. Why? Why would an act of healing get somebody into trouble? Because Jesus was performing, performing this act on the Sabbath day. Now, uttering the words would not necessarily constitute work, but Jesus' act of, of um, getting this, this mixture and putting it on the man's eye was considered to be work. And so the moment that Jesus did this, it caused a stir in the entire community. So first of all, people started to see this man healed and they started to react. They wondered what had happened to him. And so the news got to the religious authorities. The Pharisees who were guardians of the law. And especially on the Sabbath day, they were the policemen. Any infraction of the Sabbath laws, they would come down on. That was what they occupied themselves with among other things. And so Jesus knew that this was going to be problematic. But that reminds us that Jesus is willing to stand with us. And Jesus' care is with us, no matter what the cost. And that's what we need to remember in these days. That Jesus is our hope. And Jesus stands with us, no matter what the cost. And even when we don't know the dangers. Now this man did not know what was going to happen to him. He did not know how his life was going to be changed by the action of Jesus, our hope. So, story gets around. And the whole community is a buzz. That this man who many people think had been born in sin or that his, his parents had committed sin was healed. So, why did this happen? How come? Well, the parents were calling. And the parents were in a difficult situation because they were warned that if they had talked about this Jesus that they would have been put out of the synagogue. And so there was this awe and this, this sense of fear. But I want you to, to know that when Jesus does something in our lives, Jesus' care and Jesus' concern does not stop there. I want to talk a little bit about what I call Jesus' creativity. Where Jesus can take something and make it out of nothing. Where Jesus can take somebody who was blind and give them sight. Jesus can take someone who is lame and make them walk. So, to, as, as the story goes, the parents are interviewed. They are brought in because now there is a big investigation. You would not believe that a healing would bring about an investigation, but that is what happened. And so the parents were called in and the parents wanted to cover themselves, said, well, you know, a lot of the questions you're asking us, we don't know. Why don't you ask him? You know, he's old enough to answer. And so this man comes in. Remember now that He's, he was born blind. As far as we know, Braille did not exist then. 
This man probably was not very learned. He had probably heard a lot of things during his lifetime. But there are many things that he did not know. But such is the power of God that as he is called in before the religious authorities, there's a certain amount of understanding and knowledge that he shows. There's a certain amount of calm that he, that he uh, exudes. And there's a certain amount of, 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 of spiritual awareness that he portrays. Yes. And so when they asked him, he, he said to them, I do not know whether this man is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. I don't know all of the things that you're talking about this Jesus. I don't know what the things that you're, you're speculating. But I know for myself uh, that now I can see. I don't know about the theological basis of your arguments. I don't know what is behind all of this. I am not that learned. But now I, one thing I know is that Jesus has done something in my life. I can now see. And so very often in our lives, there are lots of things that we don't know. We don't know some of all of what people are saying about these days. We don't know some of what some of the talking heads are saying, whether it be on Fox News, on CNN, on um, 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 MSNBC, or any of the other cable networks. But what we do know is that God is still working in our own lives, and that God is our hope, and God is our salvation. We might not be able to explain many of the things, but we do know what we have seen and experienced. And such is the creativity of God through Jesus Christ that, that God is able to, to build us up, to, to do things with us that we never dreamed that we could have done or could have happened in our own lives. But there's something that I want to remind us about, and that is about Jesus' commitment to us. Because when the Pharisees got tired of hearing this beggar. Who are you anyway? They, 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 their attitude was. They threw him out. They cast him out of the community. So now he was healed, but he had nowhere to go. The community that he had been a part of all his life suddenly had excluded him. But God never abandons us. God is always with us. And such is the commitment of Jesus Christ that the Bible tells us that Jesus heard that they had driven him out and Jesus went and found him. When we go through the difficulties that we experience, when we go through things that we never dreamed that we would see, when we go through the ups and downs of life, Jesus is with us. This man had, been, had seen some ups. Well, he started down first of all being blind. He had seen an up with being healed. And then he was down now when, when they cast him out of the community. They disparaged him. And, his, and remember too now that his parents could not say anything to defend him. Because they would also have been thrown out. But Jesus is there. God is with us in every situation. Jesus stands with us. And in a sense, somebody says that the incarnation of Jesus is just as important as the crucifixion of Jesus. Now this is important for us to remember because right now our focus is on the Lenten season. We're getting up to Holy Week. And our focus in Holy Week is going to be on the death and then the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in a sense, the Lenten season is a, is a um, holiest season of the Christian year. Very often we forget the importance of Christmas. And so what one commentator wants to remind us is that the incarnation of Jesus, the revelation of Jesus, is just as important as the death and resurrection. Because in coming on earth as a human being, Jesus lived among us understood where we were going and is able to navigate all of the circumstances of life with us. 
Jesus stays committed to us because Jesus understands what we go through. And in a sense, Jesus understands what we are going through in these days and in this age. And so, Jesus' commitment doesn't stop there. So, Jesus knew now that this man needed to understand a few spiritual things. Because Jesus' act of healing him, which was a natural act, had a spiritual lesson. All of the things that we go through in life have a spiritual focus. Remember now, we are not just of this earth, but we are citizens of a heavenly kingdom. And that is what we always need to remember. So Jesus engages him in some conversation. And Jesus says, do you believe in the Son of Man? Do you believe in the Messiah? Do you, do you believe in the one that God has sent on this earth to make a difference in everyday lives? And he answered, and who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus was hiding in plain sight. This man didn't quite understand how it was that, that God had cared so much for him. That God would send God's own son to be with him and to actually reveal God's self to him. And when Jesus said, I am he, he said, you have seen him and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. Some of us are searching for the revelation of Jesus. And like this, this person I mentioned earlier, there are times when we go through our difficult times and we wonder where Jesus is. Where is Jesus in all of this? But Jesus is so committed to us that Jesus is not going to leave us. Even when we turn our backs on Jesus, even when others turn their backs on us, Jesus is still going to reach out to us and be there. And Jesus is going to find a way to reveal Jesus' self to us, God's self to us. And it reminds us that we are so important in God's sight. That God sent God's only son to walk on this earth. And then to personalize that relationship. Personally. And so this man, this man born blind was going about his regular activities. We're not told what he was doing but it, it, it's not far-fetched to think that he was probably begging like many people in that, in that situation would. But out of that, in that situation, God came and God revealed God's self. And Jesus, our hope, made a difference in this person's life. I pray that today, no matter what you're thinking, no matter what you're going through, no matter what are the, the signs around us, that we will remember that Jesus is still our hope. That Jesus will not abandon us. And that God did not send God's son just for the fun of it. God sent God's son so that in the individual lives, we can experience this Jesus. We can experience this son of man. And I pray that any, all of us this day will be like this blind man. Delivered from the spiritual blindness. Delivered from those things that keep us down. Delivered deliver from those things that keep us outside of the community. And that indeed we'll be so transformed that we will become bold disciples of Jesus. Willing to talk about Jesus. Willing to talk about what Jesus has done for us. And being able to come face to face with the possibilities that lie in Jesus. May God be our strength in all of what we are going through this day. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, continue now to be our strength and to be our guide in all of what we go through. And may the experience of this blind man be an experience that we can all, we can all relate to. An experience of deliverance. In the name of Christ. Amen. I'm going to invite um, Brother God Loving to come and now sing for us. Should I? 
feel discouraged And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely And wish for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion A constant friend is he His eye is on the sparrow And I know he watches me His eye is on part of a service where we normally have all your offerings and so I want to say a word about our offerings going forward as we get into this new time we um, as you know our, our obligations and our ministry continues despite what has been happening and so we are as a church we are very dependent on all of our contributions to make sure that this ministry goes on. And so we would like to um, remind you that you can still give. You can give online and with those of you who received a copy of the bulletin um, over the last couple of days, there's also a sheet that tells you how you can give online. Um, the easiest place and the first place to go is to our website. Um, and we ask you to be able to um, www.fumcmvny.org um, There are also some ways in which you can give through mobile apps. You can also mail your contributions in. Um, it, it, it's also possible for you to drop them off. to. Um, we have a mail slot at the front of the church. Um, you can also drop those off. Remember, even though officially we'll be closed, we will probably need to be checking in to check on different things here in, on, on the church on a regular basis. Um, but we ask you to remember to give up your contributions. Don't, don't, um, don't keep them until you get back to church. We're not certain when uh, how things are going to develop over these next few weeks. Now, here is what we want to remind you of, is that next week, we will be having a modified um, worship um, and we will let you know how things are for that up to then. Um, on the 5th of April is Palm Sunday when we, Holy Week be begins then and at this point we really can't say how things will be. You know, it really is a, a, an everyday thing 
and we will make sure that we communicate with you as best as possible. Um, if you have not been receiving emails from us and you're listening, we want to make sure that we have your correct email address. Um, if you will send an email to us and tell us that you have not been receiving emails, there could be a number of reasons. We remember we will still be able to do a lot, a lot of things digitally and online. Um, one, my, one last word about um, or giving. Today is Encore Sunday. And Encore Sunday is usually on the fourth Sunday in Lent. Encore, as many of you know, is a disaster relief agency. And if ever a time Encore was important, it would be now. Um, there are many ways in which Encore is going to have to respond. But unfortunately, we're not in service to do an official Encore offering. You could, those of you, especially those of you who have um, envelopes, you could do an Encore offering and send that in. Or if you give a contribution, if there's a way in which you can indicate that you want some of that to go towards Encore. But secondly, Encore has a, um, has a website that you can give directly to. They have, have, all, have also sent an Encore correspondence to many of us who have emailed. And you can click online and donate directly to Encore. Um, I'm not certain if it has a way of indicating your church. But at this point, um, the, the giving, um, usually when you give in church, we send that to the conference center and the church is credited for that. Um, at this point, it is very important, it's more important to give than for us to have, uh, have credit. So please, um, if you can give to Encore as well, please do so. I'm now going to get ready for us to go and I'd like us again to join in prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you, even though it's not in the traditional sense. Thank you for the joy of understanding that there are brothers and sisters who are joining a similar experience with us. Thank you, oh God, for the fact that you care so much for us, you, that you sent Jesus to, to walk on this earth and to understand what we go through. So now, God, we know that you know everything and you understand all of what we're going through. Continue to be our strength now, we pray, and keep all of us in your care. Bless our families, protect our families, protect our friends, protect our children, protect our seniors, oh God, we ask you. And Lord, again, guide those who have the responsibility of making tough decisions on our behalf. Hear our prayers, we ask you, and guide us, we pray. And now, we pray that the love of God, our Creator, the grace of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, and the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer, be with all of us, now and forevermore. May God's people say together, Amen. Amen. Thank you.